Mr. Daddy here again, and today we're going to be talking about a couple exciting announcements that have taken place in the industry as of late, so stay tuned and we'll check them out. To get things started today, we're going to be talking about Kentucky Kingdom's latest announcement, Kentucky Flyer. video starts off with this clip showing this big air tower type thing. shows this old aircraft flying into the sky. The logo, I know a lot of people have criticized this logo, and honestly, it really isn't that great, and uh, it, that's another thing. Shows a little more of the animation. We get this Gravity Group logo. So yeah, that's a big surprise. Um, nobody was really expecting that Gravity Group. It's only going to be 1,280 feet long, so it's going to be a small family Gravity Group. 45 foot drop, 52 degrees. 54 degree banking turns and it's going to hit a top speed of 35 miles per hour. 12 airtime elements. Now that's that's pretty good, especially for a smaller scale coaster. Going to feature Gravity Group's famous Timberliner trains. I've never ridden any of those. I think they look pretty awesome though. Now you only have to be 40 inches tall to ride this, which is something that's really good. And here we have this rendering showing a little bit of the coaster. Now, we haven't received an official POV from the park yet of what it's going to look like. Um, other people have taken this rendering from this video and turned it into a POV and no limits and other things like that. And uh, I'll post a link to one of those in the description. But like I said, we haven't received an official POV yet. So, Kentucky Flyer. This is a really interesting announcement. Now, I've never ridden a family, uh, one of these small family-sized Gravity Group wooden coasters before. I know a lot of people who have ridden them said they're really excellent rides and great additions to the park, such as, you know, Wooden Warrior at Quasi, then you've got Oscar's Wacky Taxi, which is at Sesame Place. I actually think this is a really good announcement for Kentucky Kingdom, and it's exactly what they needed. Now, a lot of people were making predictions like these crazy, like, you know, huge coasters, like, you know, $20 million B&M hyper coasters and this and that. I thought those were way too lofty. I never expected them to get anything like that. But this is exactly what Kentucky Kingdom needed. They need that family coaster because they have, you know, they have T3, which is a really thrilling coaster with lots of inversions. They've got Thunder Run, which is an older wooden coaster, but still it's a thrilling coaster. Storm Chaser, which is a really intense airtime focused ride. Then Lightning Run, which is another intense airtime packed coaster, although smaller. So they really need that family coaster to pull that family market in. Right now they just have you know, a kiddie coaster, then after that it's just a bunch of, you know, really intense coasters and big thrilling ones. So this is going to be really good, you know, it has that 40 inch height limit, which is really good, which means all the families can ride it together, you know, it's not just going to be a little kid's coaster, you know, something that kids can ride with their parents, or this is going to be something everybody's going to enjoy, even the big time coaster enthusiasts, you know, it's going to have all that air time, it's going to provide a great fun ride. I think this is perfect. I don't really have a whole lot else to say about it. Maybe in the next couple years, uh, I'll hopefully be able to make it out to Kentucky Kingdom and experience all their awesome rides, and I think this is going to be another great one here. Next thing we're going to be talking about today is Hershey Park and their announcement of Chocolate Town. I have not been to Hershey Park yet. Hopefully I'll be able to make it out there 2020 or so. But you walk up to the park, and there's this beautiful looking entrance. It shows this flagship store that they're going to have, a large collection of Hershey merchandise, a confectionery kitchen. It all sounds great. Ice cream parlor. None of these places actually have names yet. They've announced it so far ahead because they kind of have to because of the scope of the project with the whole front entrance being redone and everything. So none of the stuff really, besides Starbucks, which you're going to see shortly here in the video, has names yet. So you walk into these beautiful front gates, you get a beautiful view of this, what's going to be this brand new, huge B&M 
presumably hyper coaster. We got this beautiful kisses fountain. This is really going to make for great photos here. This area looks absolutely beautiful. You got that helix wrapping around there. You got the train going by there. It's it's going to be great here. There's a carousel up front. And I guess that carousel is going to be moved from the old entrance. It used to be by the old entrance to the parks. Here's, here's the Starbucks I was talking about earlier. And then here it is, the 15th coaster, fastest, tallest, longest, and sweetest. Very interesting. First things first, um, notice right off the bat it has a really interesting color scheme. It's obviously going to have a chocolate theme to it, which I think is awesome. Got a restaurant there. Obviously, I'm mostly going to be talking about the coaster in this video. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, talk about that. Based on official documents that have been filed by Hershey Park, we pretty much know that that new B&M coaster is going to be a hyper coaster. Although, a lot of people have pointed this out, there is a possibility it could be a giga coaster, meaning it would be 300 feet or more taller. We don't really know yet. We don't know the stats of it. They haven't announced any of the stats or obviously the name yet. But Hershey Park did say, from what I've heard, several people have said, Hershey Park stated, you think you know everything, but you don't, in regards to their new coaster. So th there is a chance it could be a giga coaster, we're not ruling that out, but we're just going to assume it's going to be a hyper coaster, and we're going to go with that for right now. I have not experienced a B&M hyper coaster myself up to this point. And hopefully that'll be changing next year, and I'll get to ride a couple of them. But, I mean, they look like great rides. From what I've heard, they're big crowd pleasers. You know, they have their fun rides that aren't too intense, but they're very thrilling, provide great floater airtime, in some cases, decent ejector airtime, too. And, uh... I mean, I think, based on the layout that we see in this video, with this one, too, we don't have an official POV because, you know, the park's announcements so far ahead, they're going to kind of do announcements and phases and talk about different things in the future, and we're going to get more details later on. But from the layout in this video, this looks like it's going to be an absolutely phenomenal B&M Piper coaster. I mean, the layout looks amazing, and... Uh, the way it just interacts with the whole Chocolate Town area, and it's just going to be a fantastic front gate coaster. They're kind of taking a page out of the Cedar, Cedar Fair book, it looks like, by you know having that beautiful front gate entrance there with a big, sprawling B&M coaster. It's, it's going to be great. Now, something that I thought was really weird at first, and a lot of people have talked about this, is... It seems kind of odd that they're adding a hyper coaster, presuming this is a hyper coaster and not a giga. It does have a very hyper coaster looking layout, even if it is a giga. But um, let's say it's going to be a hyper coaster. It's very interesting because Hershey Park has Sky Rush, which is a hyper coaster. It is made by Intamin, though, and it's going to be a very different type of ride experience from Sky Rush, however. Skyrush is very intense, focuses on really strong ejector airtime, where this is most likely going to be focused on floater air, and it's not going to be nearly as intense as Skyrush. But over time, I've warmed up more to the idea of there being two hyper coasters, mainly because of all of what I just said. You know, it's going to be a totally different ride experience, and honestly, the general public isn't going to have any idea. I mean, as coaster enthusiasts, we're going to notice stuff like that. But you got to think, you know, in, in bigger terms, you know, it. think of it in a bigger scope. The general public isn't going to have any idea. And this is going to be a great investment for Hershey Park. I mean, this is going to bring in so many new guests, you know, along with all the other stuff that they're adding. It's going to be a great addition. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about this ride in the future. Hopefully I'll be able to make it out to Hershey Park in the next couple years.
Thank you guys for watching this video today. This has been Coaster Daddy. See y'all later.